Hello everybody, it's Sunday and I am getting stuff done. It's errand day, we gotta fill up the water jugs. I had to uh, arrange all of my paperwork in my, uh, in the, my, in our office. I've been pushing it off for about four months. Finally got that done. Uh, I've gotten back into Farming Simulator 19. I know that Farming Simulator 21 is coming out uh, in quarter four this year. So I'm, I'm excited to uh, try that out once it comes out. I may not buy it like right away, but uh, uh, it's a game I'm really, well, it's a game I'm really into. Every now and then I go through my phases, right? And I'm, I've just started a new farm again. We'll see. Farmer Josh has what it takes to make it without getting buried in debt and going bankrupt. <laughs> so I'm gonna run into, uh, or run, I am in town. I'm gonna run downtown, get my water bottles filled here, get them replaced. And uh, Brett's at work, but later on we're going to mom and dad's for supper. It's so nice to be able to visit again. Uh, in Manitoba, mask mandates as of to, uh, yesterday, but last week for you, uh, were lifted. In Manitoba, finally, we'll see if it stays that way or not. I hope the people are smart and uh, that uh, things don't get worse again. But, you know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a professional at any of this stuff. I don't know what's going on. I'm just trying my best to do my part and trying to do, uh, trying to do what's right. But we'll see what happens. No one really knows what's going on. But anyway, so life is back to somewhat normal here in Manitoba for the time being. I know we had a plan of reopening everything and lifting these mandates in a month from now, but uh, that's been uh, pushed forward. So we're, we're doing this all a month early because uh, we've reached our goals as a province and yada yada. If you're from Manitoba, you know the whole story already. And if you're not from Manitoba, you don't really care because all of these health mandates and stuff are all different in every region. Every province has their own health mandates and the US I think is pretty similar every state has their own thing going on so North America is kind of just a mumble jumble mess right now it depends what area you're in we all have different rules depending on what province or state so anyways uh, had my coffee let's uh let's get out there in a the pickup we got stuff to oh and we got to pick up dog food Sundays 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 Got my new shoes on. Put, ho, my new Skechers. They are steel toes, actually. I, uh, I only wear steel toes, whether it be just my casual shoes or my work shoes. Always have steel toes, and they're usually Skechers. Britt got me uh, into my first pair of Skechers a couple of years ago, and uh, for me, they've been the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn, and they last the longest. I really like them anyways. I'm not trying to promote them or anything, but I did get new shoes. Ho! Ho! New shoes. That's a good feeling. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So we got our dog food, we got our water. That was my only errands to leave the house for today. So with that being out of the way and finished, let's go home and do some farming. How about that? Gotta work my, I don't, I don't own any land yet. And I started this one, uh, if you're familiar with Farm Simulator 2019, uh, I started this farm in the European uh, map. Friend, friend, son, friend, friend, something like that. The other one was in the American map in Ravenport. So what I do is I try to play it as realistically as possible. And uh, I work my way up buying land. I buy a bunch of equipment and then I just contract myself out to other farmers that need my, uh, my like I spray their fields for them, I harvest, I seed. Ah, uh, you guys don't care. You guys don't care. It's fun. I like simulator games. If I want to play like any first person shooting games or anything like Call of Duty, 
Uh, I'll play it on my PlayStation. I like the controls a lot better. But on my computer, I like simulation games. It also practices your business skills that way. Making sure you don't go bankrupt when you're running a business. It also sort of gives you a chance to live the life of someone that you'll never uh, get to be. You know, I'll never be a farmer. The farmers nowadays, you gotta give them credit. They are very, very intelligent people and they go through a lot of schooling for it. I grew up on a farm. Uh, we didn't own it, but we lived on a farm uh, for a while anyways. We rented a house on the farm and it was a big chicken farm. Plus they had thousands of acres to of agricultural land. And uh, my friend who was like a year or two older than me, I think he was two years older than me. He wants to take over the farm, I, I think. I don't know if that's still his plan. I haven't talked to him in several years actually, but. At the time, that was the plan, and so he went through school and through university and everything uh, to learn everything there is about agriculture. There's a lot more than just putting seeds in the ground and hoping it rains. There's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff you got to learn about crop rotation, about different uh, sprays, chemicals, herbicides, pesticides, when to use them, where to use them, when not to use them, and it's all very very expensive. And then you got the the farm equipment to take care of. Their combine was worth just under a million dollars, I think. And they had a big four-wheel drive, a big, massive John Deere for pulling their air seeder. That air seeder was worth a few million dollars. Plus, the tractor was worth like a million dollars. They had millions of dollars of equipment. You got to maintain that and uh, make sure all the bills are paid. And they had chicken barns yet. And their, their chicken barns were very... Uh, and this was... Remember, this is like 10, 15 years ago. They were very, like, smart barns, I would call them. Uh... Everything's connected to your phone, everything's connected to the internet, and uh, you can tell exactly how your barn is doing, how your chickens are doing, just by looking at an app on your phone. And if there's any problems whatsoever, it'll notify you right away when you get out there to the barn. Uh, the feeders and the watering lines that they have in there, they automatically raise as the chicks grow into chickens and as they get bigger. The feeding troughs and feed lines, they, they raise up on their own like you, you can you can raise the whole barn, not the whole barn, but the whole feeding troughs. It's so hard to explain. I was so blown away when I went in there. And I was a kid then. That was like 15, 20 years ago now. So by now, it's probably gotten even better and even more technologically advanced. Like uh, these farms, they're they are like uh, 21st century wonders almost. And the farmers they're talking to you about all of the chemicals and uh, and and food and math that it takes to get everything done and the there's a lot more to it than I thought but anyways the whole point of saying that was uh, you know I can play a simulation game and uh, they're so realistic nowadays already that I get a pretty good idea and a pretty good view of what they go through on a daily basis just a little little smidgen of what they go through farmers are, are very very hard-working people and we're surrounded by them here in the prairies and uh, you know, people who grow up and live in big cities their whole lives, they often, uh, you know the stereotype, what they think of the, the farmers, right? They couldn't, when they say that farmers are dumb or farmers are uneducated, they couldn't be further from the truth. They are some of the most educated, most intelligent people in society. And they grow our food for us and they do a good job of it, so. Probably shouldn't pick on them. I know I pick on them when they're on the road a little bit. I try to keep it. Try to keep it friendly. Please keep growing my food. I really like to eat. <laughs> Just sometimes I feel like they could take the grid roads and the side roads and farm roads to get to where they're going, but they take the main highway and block up traffic on the main highway. You're right. You're right. Stop complaining, Sugar Josh. They grow your food, okay? They're <laughs> Enough about that. Enough about that. Farmer Josh here. What do I know, right? What do I know? I drive trucks for a living. I can tell you how to secure a load and tie it down, get it across the country safely. That's my specialty. I wouldn't hire a doctor or a, a farmer necessarily to tie down 55,000 pounds of steel. Likewise, when it comes to my health and when it comes to my food, you know, I'll I'll yield to the doctors and to the farmers, people who specialize in that. The worst part, oh jeez. The worst part about picking up the water and the dog food 
is carrying it inside. I sure am glad that we have a very small house so I don't have to carry it very far. <laughs> Believe me, it was a lot worse. A lot. <laughs> I just organized and cleaned this whole room. Give me some credit. It's just this blanket. The dog's messed up this blanket a little bit. This is our dog blanket and our dog bed. Yes, our dogs have their own room and their own bed. Well, I shared the room with them because here's my YouTube editing station. One pair of pants that's still drying out. They weren't quite dry yet. Oh, looks like they're good to go now. I'll wear them tomorrow for work. Got all the, the bull snot gear all in the corner organized. Videos rendering, desk dusted and cleaned. I gotta organize that shelf again. I did organize that at one time, but this house is so small that everything just gets piled in here so quick, you know? And then here's this room. Uh, looks better when we have one blanket covering the whole bed, but you get it. We sleep with our own blankets. Uh, otherwise, uh, for me anyways, Whenever she turns over at night, we sleep at the house very cold. Like at 17 Celsius, it's pretty cold. And we like it that way. But when she turns over, all that cold air rushes under the blanket and wakes me up. And I probably do the same thing to her. So we sleep with our own blankets to prevent that. <laughs> I moved the whole bed out of the way. I vacuumed underneath everything. All of this cleaned. I'm pretty proud of myself. And there's Chevy. You guys gotta go in your room. Come on, go in your room, go in your bed. Just about to enjoy our lemon pie dessert. First we need a picture. Right. Need a picture or it doesn't happen or it didn't happen. Alright. Okay. Go there we go. <laughs> oh that's there, oh, oh, a couple of angles, a couple of different angles. Mm -hmm. Dad's good. taking this very serious. <laughs> I am no, crosswise. Oh, okay. I've got the yes. There we go. There. Photo evidence. <laughs> it happened. So it's nice to be visiting again. Absolutely. And hello to every one of you there. Look at yeah. the, the, the queen of the house is back home. Yeah. Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth, yeah. How's it feel, Mom? She, She's yes, a little younger great. than the yeah. original. It's good to be home. Yeah, yeah, had a lot of people praying for you. I did. Thank you, everyone that prayed. Yeah. Just wanted to let her say a few words if you yeah. if you want to. Many of you know, Mom uh, had a, a big fight for her life not too long ago. Uh, she uh, went into the hospital uh, with severe severe pneumonia, yeah, on and uh, on July first, and Canada was day, yeah. put into a coma, mm -hmm. and on a ventilator for a week and you know, yeah a week seven, right yeah, seven and a half days yeah gave us all a very very big scare i didn't know i was giving them a scare and i'm sorry yeah. i did <laughs> not your fault yeah so i just want to say that yes i was very sick but i want to also tell you that stay healthy eat healthy walk exercise stay healthy because that's the way you can get be strong and your other organs will be strong and you can make it through even if you have to be intubated and go into a coma. But yes, that's, that's what I want to say. Stay healthy. Keep, mm -hmm. keep looking after yourself. And that's the biggest thing, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, and, Mom. Uh, Eat well. Make sure yeah. your, bo your body is healthy enough that you can enjoy something like this every <laughs> once in a while. Yeah. A special occasion like this, you know. Special occasions. <laughs> He's right, boys, and sugar. Yeah, yeah. Talking yeah. about being healthy, Dad comes not, into the frame with a yeah. piece of cake. Not too much sugar. <laughs> yeah. Eat but, healthy. But, but you know, sweetheart, I'll help you eat it now. <laughs> oh, you're such a generous man. Ah, uh, yes. And a big plate. I have given you a little plate, sir. <laughs> uh, you're yeah. the queen. Uh, you is that one for me? That one is for you. Whoa. <laughs> He's See, might be just a little bit bigger than hers. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's okay. Yeah, that's it's okay. Very, but she's very. probably saying hers is a little bit too big, so. <laughs> no, no, with how light it is, it's super light cake. It's yeah, like it's really light. It just melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. It does, I know. Mm -hmm. 
well, it's really nice to visit with mom and dad right now and uh, not have to worry about anything really because, uh, well, Manitoba Health and Health Canada, I believe, have given mom and dad 90 days immunity. Yes. Uh, because they have had it and they've recovered. That gives them uh, full immunity for the next three to eight months. They're not too sure because everybody's sort of learning as things go along, but for at least three months, they know that they can't pass anything on and they can't get sick with the same thing again. I would probably have really good antibodies. Oh, hey. Yeah. You had it so much in your system. Yeah, they're just saying they had it so bad that they have really, they should have really good antibodies and they're in contact with their doctors and, and uh, calls regularly. Is that what yeah. you were gonna say? Well, well, he calls every once in a while. Yeah, just to make sure we're doing okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, Mom, you look perfectly normal. I feel you look, normal most of the time. You look almost brighter and happier than before. <laughs> I mean, having been so sick, you value life differently, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, and you look at things a little bit differently and uh, just live a little bit more carefully. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, you can beat it. But like I said, stay healthy. Eat healthy. Keep yourself healthy so that when something does hit your system, your body is prepared to fight it. Yeah. And I am a hypocrite for nodding along. <laughs> yes, and I know I'm a bit of a hypocrite too because I'm going to go eat a big fat piece of cake over there. And I don't eat the best either, but I'm talking to myself as well. And it's a reminder every time that I see mom and dad because dad was very sick too. But uh, he, he yeah. wasn't quite as sick, mm -hmm. but very sick. I would still say you got quite sick, well, but you, you, sick. Yeah. you were able to recover at home. For him not to yeah. want to eat a meal. Yeah. He's, he's sick. I love my food. When I was a little kid, I got some kind of a virus. I don't know what kind of virus it was, nobody knew, because we live in South America and no idea what it was. And I got quite sick and uh, my uh, appetite went away and I was kind of known as this, this scrawny little kid in the family, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, by the time I finally learned how to eat, I was a teenager. Then I learned to love food, and I can't get enough of it. Yeah. <laughs> so what he's basically saying is he's a fat kid at heart. At heart. Yeah. Fat kid at heart. But, and a guy that can't gain weight. Yeah. I can eat yeah. all I want. I, I love it. My skinny little arms. Must you know? be nice. Skinniest yeah. truck driver out there. <laughs> <laughs> and eats like a horse, apparently. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just I, I eat. Uh, Steak and pork chops, and I haven't seen a horse eat steak and pork chops yet. <laughs> Carnivorous <Yeah>. horse. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, yeah, that is good. I agree with it. Uh, stay healthy, think positive. That's a big part. Mm -hmm. If if you think and you're convinced that you're sick and you're going to get sick, you're probably going to get sick. Yeah. 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 But yeah. if you if you think and believe that you're going to get well. If not totally well, but at least it will most definitely help along a great deal. Because yeah. mm -hmm. the body works with the mind. Yeah. If the body yeah, is positive, true. I mean, if the mind is positive, mm -hmm. that you can beat this or you can stay healthy, at least you got a whole lot better chance mm -hmm. for the body to oh, don't be healthy yeah. and stay healthy. Right. Don't give up. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my yeah. five <laughs> cents. Five cents. We don't mm -hmm. have pennies no more, so that's my nickel's worth. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna eat this cake right now and go against everything I just told you guys to do. But uh, <laughs> no calories. No, <laughs> it is a zero diet, calorie. It's diet cake. Well, there you go. There's that's something. It's got yeah. fruits and dairy. It's just don't live off of it. Yeah. Just yeah. just don't live off of it. It's a special treat. <laughs> exactly. So this is Mom's oxygen machine that uh, Manitoba Health brought in for her. She puts in her nose and it pumps. Pure oxygen out of here. It's got a long enough hose to reach all over the all house. Downstairs. All the way downstairs, eh? Mm -hmm. And apparently, I learned this today. I was today years old when I learned that apparently the oxygen coming out of here is flammable. And so when you have this running in the house, you can't have any candles, you can't have any lighters. No electric motors anywhere nearby. No electric motors, nothing? Can be in a distance, but not right close to where the oxygen comes out. Like uh, when she wears it, can't be anywhere near her uh, nose, like a hair dryer. Uh, oh, or can't no. Over oh. Heat here. I didn't know that oxygen was that flammable. I 
either until they brought it in the room, you know? Huh. Yeah. And so that reaches all over the house. And when she goes on walks, she has this walker here, but she doesn't seem to need it. She has an oxygen tank in here as well. A portable one. Yeah. And she only needs to use it if she's feeling tired or short of breath. And she's been doing so good and healing up so fast that uh, she she hasn't really needed it that much. No, she has asked me very little. Yeah. Just when we're in a bit of a rush with something or she walks a little bit yeah. further than normal or walks a few stairs, we have a couple of stairs going into the garage and up. <coughs> well, if she does steps. The deck. Yeah. yeah. And for night, I'm guessing. And I think she just stays here. Mm -hmm. She's been downstairs once. She, oh. she can do it. She, long as she is, takes her time, you know? Oh, yeah. She yeah. said that she went down these stairs here once today. Twelve steps. Yeah. And then that takes takes a lot of energy and oxygen, and then uh, she has well that machine for when she's at home. That's amazing how much more energy it takes just going up and down this, especially if if you're a bit in a hurry, mm -hmm. or not really in a rush, but just walking a little faster and carrying something yet. And now uh, when you're well and healthy, you usually take a take a deep breath, but think of nothing, right? Yeah. Oh, like, Feeling great, you know, but when you're that short on oxygen, yeah. you do good, but just shallow oxygen, oh, you'll notice it. Wow. You walk them stairs slow. <laughs> yeah, she hasn't needed it too much. Okay. Do you uh, wear the oxygen for for night? I do for night, just because I don't want to wake up all of a sudden being being breathless. Being out of breath. Okay. Yeah. And uh, September eighth, right, is when you go in for your reassessment. Yeah. yeah. And so if she doesn't need it at all then, and the doctors clear her of it, yeah. then I when I nap, then won't I need it at all. Then I don't. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Been doing so good. Yeah. Healing up so fast. That's for later. <laughs> Saving it for later. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I was excited to share this with you, uh, showing you how well mom is doing. I know you all didn't see her uh, when she was at her lowest, in the ICU, on the ventilator, in the coma. Uh, the family did, me, my sisters, my dad, we had uh, daily Zoom calls. Uh, the nurses that were there were so nice. Uh, the, apparently they watched my videos, what are the chances, right? They told my mom, are you Trucker Josh's mom? <laughs> I found that funny, what are the chances? But hey guys, uh, I wanted to thank you again, look how well she's doing. You guys, you guys help that. You nurses, you doctors, and all of you out there praying for her, you've all brought her to where she is today. And a remarkable, miraculous recovery. Out of the hospital weeks, if not months, before the doctors had anticipated. Uh, they told us it would be a lot longer. She's recovered so much faster than anyone expected. And, uh, you know, they may have given, been giving us worst case scenarios, but uh, like, like mom said, uh, the most important thing is to stay healthy. I asked her if she wanted to say anything, and of course she wanted to say thank you. Uh, so she was able to thank you herself there. And uh, the other main thing was to stay healthy and be prepared. You know, this uh, virus going around the world is a nasty one. It affects everybody differently. Some people barely notice it. Other people end up in the ICU on a ventilator. And uh, you never know who it's going to be or who it's going to affect the worst or how it's going to affect you. Chances are it's probably going to reach you at some point or another. And uh, you want your body to be prepared for it. You want to have a healthy body that's strong and ready to fight. So that uh, when it has to fight something off that it's, it's prepared. And uh, we're so thankful. We're so thankful and uh, I feel like I've been given extra time and allowed more time with mom here on this earth and uh I'm, I'm so glad that dad was able to recover as well too i don't want to forget that he uh was very sick as well right he was able to recover at home and uh, he didn't have to be hospitalized uh which is probably why it didn't give us the same scare obviously as mom being in the hospital but he got sick very sick as well too he was able to recover and mom nursed him back to health and in the process got sick herself and uh 
man what a crazy couple of months what an emotional a couple of months uh, I learned that I am not ready and I don't think I ever will be but I'm definitely not ready to part with my mom and dad yet <laughs> I'm definitely not ready and you know what uh, obviously I never will be never will be but I am so thankful so thankful that I've been given more time with both of them and I, I never want to take that for granted and I don't want you to take that for granted either and that's why I'm sharing this with you it is a very personal part of our lives I've made sure that they're okay with me sharing it obviously they were on the film they they welcome that and uh, they wanted to say thank you personally to you guys and uh, doctors and the nurses and everybody but uh, I wanted this to encourage you guys that uh, yeah this this thing going around the world is nasty and you never know how it's gonna affect you but you can beat it even if it hits you uh, hits you that bad, you can beat it if you're prepared. If you're prepared physically in your body. And I'm speaking to myself right now, okay? Because I need to get healthier too. I really do. So why don't we do it together, all right? Because if any of us, me or you, end up in that position, I want us all to be able to be strong enough to get through it. Anyways, I had a great weekend. I hope you had a great weekend. And I'll talk to you all tomorrow. We're back to work driving truck tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out, everybody.